Hey Kevin, what are you going to do for Pikmin's 15th anniversary? Pikmin's 15th anniversary? Ah, oh, crap! What am I going to do? I'm going to completely miss doing something for Pikmin's 15th anniversary! Oh no, this is awful! A disaster! All hope is lost! The Pikmin are extinct! Who decided that the submerged castle should be underwater? Hey, what is it about Pikmin that you like exactly? Not now! I have to do something for Pikmin's 15th anniversary! I do. It's almost sundown. I gotta do something before I... I... I know. That's it. I'll talk about Pikmin for the 15th anniversary. But I'll need somebody to listen. How about you? Oh, do I have to? Yes. I mean, who else am I gonna tell about the game? Pikmin. I don't even know how to begin explaining my history with this game. This game has pretty much been with me my whole life, and I've loved it ever since I first encountered it. And for those who don't know, I'm a big Pikmin fan. Like, a big Pikmin fan. Like, this game made me that weird kid that everybody knows. For those who don't know, Pikmin is a real-time strategy game developed by Nintendo for the Nintendo GameCube. Released on October 26, 2001, the game was met with high praise for its puzzles and graphics, which for the time were very nice. Pikmin was created by the man himself, Shigeru Miyamoto, starting out from the concept of an Adam and Eve game and working its way to what it is today. Kevin, how did you come to know Pikmin? Well, back on Christmas of 2001, when I was just 5 years old, my parents bought the family a Nintendo GameCube. This is the first console I can ever remember receiving, and I received my first GameCube game along with it. That's right, Luigi's Mansion. And boy, did I hate it. Those talking paintings were not nice, Nintendo. I was much more interested in what my brother had unwrapped, something lavishing with some small colorful creatures. Ever since I first laid eyes on the cover of Pikmin, I knew that I was going to love the game. I don't know what exactly drew me to it. Maybe it was the cute little creatures running around, maybe it was the weird spaceman or the large beast, or maybe it was the fact that anything was better than all those ghosts staring at me on Luigi's Mansion. The story begins with you playing as Captain Olimar, a space pilot from the planet Hokitate, 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 whatever, who is on an interstellar vacation. While sailing through space, his ship, the SS Dolphin, is struck by an asteroid causing the ship to plummet to a nearby planet, scattering 30 of its ship parts around the planet's surface. When Olimar comes to, he realizes that his ship is damaged beyond repair and he has no way to locate the missing ship parts. To make matters worse, his life support system can only function for 30 days. While exploring the impact site, Olimar discovers a weird object that he calls an onion that produces a seed. Upon sprouting and plucking, he discovers that it is in fact a creature, which he dubs a Pikmin. After working with the Pikmin, he comes across the main engine of his ship and manages to get it back to the SS Dolphin. Once again able to lift off, he sets out to find the rest of his ship parts, finding them as well as two other Pikmin types, yellow and blue, along the way. With these Pikmin in tow, Olimar is able to fight off countless beasts, regain all his lost ship parts, and make it back to the planet Hokitate. Oh, so that's why you love this game so much. No, 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 that's only a small part of it, there's more. Let me talk about the Pikmin themselves. These are the little guys that you need to do almost anything in the game. Each one has a unique ability that adds a new element of gameplay. The Reds are the first that you discover. They have a fierce attack power and a resistance to fire. These guys are very useful for combating enemies and maneuvering through heated areas. The yellows are the second that you find. They can be tossed very high into the air and wield explosive bomb rocks. They are the only ones who can reach ship parts on tall ledges and destroy rock walls. The last you are to discover are the blues. These Pikmin have the ability to survive on both land and in water, making them impeccable in areas where large amounts of water exist. They also have the ability to rescue red and yellow Pikmin if they are drowning in water. For every Pikmin type that you find, you start off with one, increasing the amount by collecting pellet posies and dead enemies. 
you literally build your army off the death of your enemies. Though you can increase your number of Pikmin indefinitely, you are limited to having 100 on the field at any given time. This makes it so that you can't go absolutely ludicrous and keeps the challenge in the game. You must use your resources to develop an effective strategy to find your ship parts in the shortest amount of time. Pikmin can also be turned into flower Pikmin by feeding them nectar or by having them remain a sprout for some time. This gives them increased movement speed, allowing them to accomplish tasks quicker. You can use this to your advantage when trying to speedily recover multiple ship parts in a single day. While searching for your missing ship parts, you encounter a multitude of obstacles that you use the Pikmin to overcome. These include walls, bridges, fire geysers, tall ledges, water, and of course, enemies themselves. Using the Pikmin is the only way to overcome many of the obstacles and get the ship parts back to the SS Dolphin. That's pretty much the core idea of the game. You're on a big scavenger hunt. There are a total of 30 ship parts in the game. Collecting more ship parts helps to increase the dolphin's capabilities, which means you can unlock more areas to discover. Of the 30 ship parts, there are 5 that are not essential to the capabilities of the dolphin's flight. These are the gimmicky ship parts, the Nova Blaster, Space Float, Massage Machine, UV Lamp, and Secret Safe. The game can be completed without collecting these parts. Oddly enough, the pilot seat is a mandatory ship part required for the dolphin to work functionally. Yeah, I don't really need this weapon of mass destruction. I guess we can retrieve it. Holy shit, is that my pilot seat? Drop everything, get that back to the ship ASAP, I ain't leaving without it. Almost every ship part has its own unique design and some stories or information along with it. I particularly like the design of the radiation canopy and the antidioxin filter and the Kronos Reactor, and the Analog Computer, and... I don't know why, they just look cool. Another cool thing is that many of the ship parts visually change the appearance as you collect them. I'm a huge sucker for seeing skeletal parts of machines and what makes them up, and I think this game is actually what brought that about. Wait, did this game turn me into a hoarder? Collecting the ship parts is, for me, the most entertaining part of the game. Seeing one being carried back by the Pikmin makes me feel like I've accomplished something. Each is located behind some obstacle or inside an enemy, and you have to figure out an idea of how to overcome that obstacle. Combined with the abilities of the Pikmin, you can easily create multiple strategies to retrieve multiple ship parts at the same time. But if the Pikmin do everything, what does Olimar do? Well, Olimar is the one who commands the Pikmin, let me explain. Olimar is a space pilot from the planet Hokitate. Very little is told about him through excerpts from discovering ship parts and his voyage logs, giving insight to how he reacts to his shipwreck on the planet. Through you learning what Olimar thinks and how he reacts to discoveries, as well as the grim thoughts he has if he can't rebuild his ship, you truly feel as if he's stranded on the planet doing his best to survive. But you are with him all the way through while he tries to rebuild his spaceship. The whole time you are playing, you are controlling the Pikmin through Captain Olimar. You use Olimar to throw, swarm, and call back your Pikmin. Olimar can also throw weak punches in the event that he has no Pikmin with them, but taking down a large enemy is very hard and generally not worthwhile. Olimar takes no damage from falls or from water. He can only take damage from enemies, fire, and bomb rocks. If Olimar happens to lie down, he will be invulnerable to any enemy attack, which is useful for distracting an enemy while Pikmin are nearby carrying a ship part. In order to move Olimar, the player must use the analog stick to move around the cursor. When the cursor moves to the maximum radius of Olimar's throwing range, Olimar himself will start moving following the cursor. In order to throw your Pikmin, you move the cursor where you want the Pikmin to be, and then press the A button to throw them. You can call back your Pikmin with the B button, disband your Pikmin with X, and swarm them with the C stick. Pressing the A button near a sprout will cause Olimar to pluck it. You can also change your camera with the R, L, and Z buttons. Pressing Y will bring up the radar, and the start will bring up the pause menu. Pressing down on the D-pad will cause Olimar to lie down. All these controls work wonderfully with the GameCube controller. The buttons that are used in unison are easy to access, and never feel awkward to handle. Wait a minute, are you playing with the Wiimote and Nunchuck? I'm playing New Play Control. New Play what? In 2008, Nintendo announced its collection of New Play Control games, and among them was Pikmin and Pikmin 2. In 2009, Pikmin New Play Control was released in North America with enhanced resolution and, of course, new controls. Pikmin New Play Control only changed a few core elements of gameplay, the first being that the analog stick no longer controls the cursor, but rather, pointing the Wiimote does. The analog stick now controls Olimar himself, meaning that you can now move in one direction and throw a Pikmin in a different direction. The other buttons were simply relocated to the Wiimote and are as such. 
A is A, B is B, X is C, Y is plus, the C stick is now down on the D-pad plus pointing the Wii Wiimote, start is minus, L is Z, R is now right or left on the D-pad, Z is up on the D-pad, and down on the D-pad is now 2. Another big change is the increased range of your cursor, allowing you to throw Pikmin further and call them from nearly anywhere on the screen. In Pikmin, you are limited to throwing the Pikmin as far as the cursor will go, and in order to call them, you must move the cursor back over the Pikmin, who must also be close by to be inside the whistle's radius. With new play control, the cursor is split into two parts, a spinning circle showing where the Pikmin will be thrown, and an outer ring where the whistle will have effect. The spinning circle is limited to about twice of what it was limited to in the GameCube version, whereas the outer ring can be pointed anywhere on the screen. This means that you can call Pikmin from anywhere as long as you can see them. This can allow for players to completely skip certain parts of a level in order to get a ship part, but it also allows for people to try out new strategies not possible in the previous version, adding a whole new experience for people switching between versions. A few other things that were added were the ability to switch Pikmin types while holding a Pikmin, which was originally implemented in Pikmin 2, and the ability to go back to any day you want on a file. Have you messed up a day and think you can do better? No sweat, just go back and try it again. Also, Yellow Pikmin no longer drop bomb rocks when they're called after being thrown, which is a godsend. No more having to get more bomb rocks because you accidentally blew all of them up. So, which version is better? That's mostly up to opinion. Each version has their advantages and disadvantages. There's one particular strategy for throwing the Pikmin that works very well with the GameCube controller. If you swarm the Pikmin towards you while pressing the A button, you can throw them at a much faster rate than normal. Though possible in new play control, it is much more difficult, as trying to swarm the Pikmin towards you while you are throwing them in a different direction is an arduous task. It's also annoying to try and keep the Pikmin against the wall and throw them onto something, as they will automatically file behind Olimar if no other command is given, where in the GameCube version, you can easily keep them swarmed in one direction and throw them in another. The GameCube version is superior with the swarm mechanic, but the new play control kills it when it comes to throwing, calling, and not setting off the damn bomb rocks, oh my god! Although, it is kind of annoying not to be able to get rid of the extra bomb rocks whenever you want. Guess you can't have it both ways. And one thing that most people would think would be better in an updated version of the game is now seemingly worse. Though present in both games, it seems that the glitches in Pikmin New Play Control are even more prominent than its GameCube counterpart. Arguably the most famous glitch is the crushing or mysterious death glitch. This occurs when an enemy you've defeated falls near your army and your Pikmin just disappear. No Pikmin spirits are seen, no noises are made, your counter just goes down and the Pikmin are lost. In Pikmin New Play Control, bridges going from a ledge to the ground seem to have gained the ability to suck your Pikmin into a new dimension. If you go underneath a bridge, you can lose considerable amounts of Pikmin in mere seconds. But hey, that's just Pikmin under the bridge. The crushing glitch also ties in with the counter glitch, where the Pikmin counter will show there are more Pikmin in your command than on the field, giving a false representation of how many Pikmin actually exist. This could easily mess up your strategy when you need to keep track of a specific amount of Pikmin for certain tasks. Another equally famous glitch is the Libra glitch. This glitch occurs when retrieving the Libra from the island in the forest navel. As the Pikmin fall off the first ledge, the Libra has a chance to go absolutely crazy and fly off the island. If you continue without it and mistakenly end the day, it also has the chance of not reappearing. This can completely ruin a run of Pikmin as it is a mandatory ship part required to beat the game. Another weird thing about New Play Control is that many of the enemy's sounds are corrupted. Enemies like Bulburbs and Breadbugs produce their walking or crying sounds at a very high-pitched level. Though it isn't game-breaking, it's quite a weird glitch that occurs. Speaking of enemies, Pikmin is abundant with memorable creatures. They all have their own unique design, attacks, and strategies for defeating them. Killing enemies is a great way to increase your army, as many of them will significantly increase your amount of Pikmin more than pellets will. And some of the enemies are essential to your quests, as 8 of your 30 ship parts are located inside enemies. Some of my favorite enemies have to be the Fiery Blowhog, Burrowing Snagger, and Armored Cannon Beetle. There are also a few hidden enemies in the game that you can easily miss. There are a couple enemies that only appear during certain time frames, such as the Mamuda and Gulix, which only appear on certain days in the impact site, or the Smoky Prog, a strange creature found in the distant spring. Many of the enemies are home to areas that help reflect their design. The first level you start in is the impact site. This area serves as a tutorial level on the first day and is home to two ship parts. 
Here, Olimar discovers the Red Pikmin as well as recovers the main engine, increasing his ship's capabilities. After the first day, the area becomes a nice haven to grow your Pikmin army, being abundant in pellets of every size, nectar, iridescent flint beetles, and pearly clam clams. The area is very small and consists of a few tree trunks, a small beach, and a small grass plain. Very few enemies appear here, but the ones that do are some of the rarest in the game. The next area unlocked is the Forest of Hope. This area is much larger than the impact site, consisting of more open plains and a large body of water. Here, Olimar discovers the Yellow Pikmin, as well as eight more of his ship parts. This area is home to the mascot enemies, the Dwarf Bulborb and Spotty Bulborb, as well as the boss enemies, the Burrowing Snaggerts. The third area unlocked is the Forest Naval. This level is a dark, cave-like area consisting of beaches, small and large pools of water, and a few very dark areas. In this area, Olimar discovers the Blue Pikmin, which finally grants him access to any part of any level. This area is home to the fire-breathing fiery blowhogs, frog-like wallywogs, the walking fungus puff stool, and a boss, the beady lawnlegs. Oh yeah, and the breadbug! This area has nine of the dolphin's ship parts scattered about. The fourth area unlocked is the Distant Spring. The largest area in the game, the Distant Spring is a huge marsh-like area consisting of large open bodies of water and many islands and tree stumps. This area is home to the Dwarf Bull Bears and Spotty Bull Bears, Puffy Blowhogs, Yellow Wallywogs, and Water Dumples. This level contains 10 of the Dolphin's ship parts. The final area of the game is the Final Trial. This is a very small area consisting of a landing area, a body of water with some islands, and an area to house the final boss, the Emperor Boblax. This level can only be accessed when all the other ship parts have been gathered and holds the final ship part. Once you've gathered every ship part, you will trigger the game's ending. After the ship is fully functional again, Olimar makes his farewells to the Pikmin in a sad goodbye scene and blasts off the planet once more. He successfully escapes the planet and heads back to Hokutate, looking back one last time. Beating the game shows the player's statistics at the end, and the player is treated to the credits and a montage of all the enemies that appear in Pikmin. However, this is only one of the endings. Should you fail to gather all the essential ship parts before the 30th night, you will trigger the game's bad ending. With his life support systems on its last breath, Olimar is forced to make an attempt to escape the planet. As he lifts off though, his ship careens out of control and plummets back to the ground. A cutscene then shows Olimar being carried to an onion by the Pikmin and then being turned into a Pikmin himself. Maybe it's just me, but I always get saddened by the good ending. Olimar spends all this time with the Pikmin and says his goodbyes ready to never see them again. I mean, yeah, there's Pikmin too, but he doesn't know about Hokutate Fright's situation. Not to mention the music in the credits getting you all worked up by showing you what Olimar and the Pikmin have been through together. It's a very tearful victory for me. Speaking of, the Pikmin soundtrack is what really ties this game together. The music is both catchy and atmospheric. The music for levels complements the design wonderfully. For example, the Impact Sight's music is what I would describe as curious, perfect for the tutorial level. The Forest of Hope is serene and peaceful with its beautiful appearance, the Forest Naval is dark and mysterious, fitting the cave design, the Distant Spring is ethereal, complementing the almost dreamlike feeling of the level, and the Final Trial has that creepy vibe of something just isn't quite right to it. Hajime Wakai did a wonderful job creating the music for this game. He is, in what I would say, the one to give Pikmin its identity. Sure, the game is unique on its own, but the music completes it and makes it the Pikmin we know. Playing this game without the music gives it a very different feel. The level's tracks even have variations for nighttime and when facing enemies. Besides just the story, Pikmin also has a different game mode called Challenge Mode. In this fun minigame, you start a level with a select amount of each Pikmin and have to increase your army as much as possible before the day ends. Your score ends up being the total amount of Pikmin you produce. The more Pikmin, the higher the score. This is a fun alternative to the story because you are trying to collect everything you can rather than just the ship parts. You can select from each of the five levels from story mode and the levels will have a completely different enemy layout from the story. Challenge mode is unlocked after discovering all three Pikmin types and each level is unlocked when unlocked in story mode. So what exactly do you like about this game? I'm getting to that, I swear. This game is relatively short, the shortest of the three released so far. It can easily be beaten in several hours if experienced, yet it still remains my favorite of the three. So what does this game do well? For one, this game was very different from many other games at the time. Its creative style of gameplay and unique designs marked it as a great new IP for Nintendo. 
One of the big things that it does extremely well is the level design, which is where the other two games fall short. For each of the areas, with the exception of the Impact Site and Final Trial, you always start out in the middle. You are immediately free to go just about anywhere as soon as the day starts, leading to multiple strategies that you can work out and test for a given day. The Forest Naval, which is my favorite level out of the entire series, is a great example of what I'm talking about. I did a more in-depth analysis here, but in short, the Forest Naval allows you to go anywhere you want from the beginning, and, with finding the blue Pikmin on this level, allows for a multitude of different strategies to recover ship parts, making it, in my opinion, the most replayable level in the series. On the opposite side of the coin, the final trial is more linear, but it makes you utilize your skills and the Pikmin's abilities to overcome a literal final trial. Another element that this game does extremely well is creating an atmosphere within the game. During the time that I play, I really feel like Olimar is stranded on an alien planet with a 30-day timer counting down to his demise. And even though you start to realize that the planet resembles Earth, it still feels unfamiliar with everything in it, really pushing that Olimar is lost. Along with this, I love that the game is much harder than the next two. The other games just aren't as challenging, and when I want to try and test myself, this is the game I like to do it in. And of course, this game is not the same without the music. This game has music that is just as much a part of the game as the game itself, meaning the music works perfectly for this game and no songs from the other two games would be a better fit. This game, in my opinion, best captures what Pikmin is. I feel this game gives players the best experience while playing and has the most replay value. But of course, like everything, it has faults. And boy, faults does it have. My biggest gripe with this game is no, not the glitches, but the goddamn Pikmin tripping everywhere. The Pikmin control the absolute worst in this game. Seriously, I know the Pikmin aren't supposed to be perfect, but when they all of a sudden turn into toddlers, it's infuriating. It feels like they never do what you want them to do. Oh, what's that? You want me to go get this item you just threw me near? This other one looks much better. Ah, oh, sweet, a whole drop of nectar just for me. Yeah, I'll regroup, just let me finish tripping first. Hey, go on without me, I've gotta stay behind this wall. Oh my god. After the Pikmin's stupidity, I'd have to go with the glitches in the game. They happen too often and can easily mess up your run of a day. The crushing glitch will cause you to lose random amounts of Pikmin and make you waste time having to get more from the Onion. And the other glitches are just nuisances that you are pretty much guaranteed to encounter while playing. These things aside, Pikmin is still an amazing game that I come back to very often. A lesser known title by Shigeru Miyamoto, Pikmin proves to have survived the test of time and was received very positively by critics, earning itself two more games in the future with a fourth on the way. And it is because of this game that I have also met tons of wonderful people and made plenty of new friends, whom I can't even see my life without them. You know how people have that one thing in their life that is a big defining point? Pikmin is that for me. As silly as it sounds, this game has made me become a more understanding person. It indirectly helped me to understand people for who they are, and not dismiss people based on their thoughts. Pikmin holds a special place in my heart, and will undoubtedly be my favorite game of all time. Well, I hope that answered your question on why I... <laughs> Hey! What about Pikmin 2? Hey, thanks for watching. I'd like to give a special thanks to Pikipedia and its community for being great friends and supporting me these last few years. Also, big thanks to my friend Hayden for helping me out with this video. Want more Pikmin? Consider subscribing to the channel, and if you'd like to see me cover more games in the future, please leave suggestions in the comments. Thanks again!